Undoubtedly, um, the biggest mistake that many novice beginning investors, even investors or traders that have been at this for a while, uh, make, and I think one of the big reasons why a lot of people um, subscribe to newsletter services, uh, the the advertising always uh, for for any of these newsletters is always that basically that you can get rich quick. Um, the reality is that investing is um, one of the hardest businesses in the world to succeed at, much less to succeed, at, you know, that kind of success to, to get rich quick. Um, it's not too terribly hard to get rich slowly. It's um, extremely hard to get rich quick and it is extremely easy to get poor quick in this business. What I do with the SMT newsletter is I, I try to, um, we try to get rich slowly. Uh, we try not to lose too terribly much money when we we're on the wrong side of a trade. And, um, you know, I try to instill in traders a, a realistic goal of what's, you know, generally possible most of the time in the market. Now, every once in a while, there will be a period where you can get rich quick. That tends to be uh, during a bubble phase, and those just don't come around very often. In, in a bubble phase, the market just chugs higher and higher day after day after day, and they're, you know, basically are no drawdowns on your position. And then, of course, the, um, the the difficulty comes in trying to control greed and not getting caught at the top, at which point then you, you get poor quickly again. Uh, very few people are able to control greed. So while a lot of people will get rich quick during a bubble phase, uh, they won't be able to control greed. They'll get caught at the top. And then uh, they'll lose everything um, when the when the bubble uh, implodes and collapses. So for the vast majority of the time, um, the way to succeed at the market in the market is to try and get rich slowly. So I, I'm going to outline what happens with um, the you know many if not most people that are buying newsletters um, and, and are trying to get rich quick. So. Uh, this is the gold market. This is an eight-year cycle low, so we are in an, a strongly trending phase right now. Um, and you would think that this is, if, if there's ever a phase to get rich quick, this is this has got to be it, right? Um, not not really. So here's here's what happens. Um, you know, very few people can can buy at the bottom here. You know, one of the problems, of course, is you don't know. Uh, you know, nobody's going to ring the bell for you uh, at the bottom. I can usually get pretty close to the bottom using cycles and sentiment, but, um, you know, I'm not going to catch the exact bottom so that you're, uh, you know, never going to get even an intraday drawdown from that point. So basically, it's very hard to pull the trigger at these bottoms because you're not sure whether or not this is the bottom. Logically, you could... Um, rationalize that it's close enough to the bottom that it shouldn't really matter that much. But when the market rolls over and makes a lower low, uh, emotions come into play and all you can see is downside, you know, and uh, it's going to drop, you know, in your mind, you think, well, we're headed another 50% lower. Usually that's not the case. Usually you've, you know, at least with cycles, you, you're close enough to where you can weather uh, the, the minimal drawdown that's going to happen if you undercut that. But but anyway, uh, let, let me go through what happens here. So first off, it, it's hard to pull the trigger at the bottom. So generally what happens is uh, traders, especially you know beginning traders or intermediate traders that haven't really learned how to control their emotions yet, um, they don't really want to pull the trigger until their emotions kind of give them the all clear. And generally what happens is when your emotions give you the all clear, well, everybody else's emotions are also telling him, you know, the coast is clear. 
And what that means is that you kind of run out of buyers, at least short term, and it's time for a corrective move. So the get rich type trader, you know, obviously what they're doing is they're, they're leveraging up their portfolio, you know, either in the um, leveraged ETFs at two or three times leverage or they're um, buying, you know, a lot of options which might have you leveraged at 20 or even 50 to 1 if you're trading front month op options. And, you know, if, if you, you know, if you were managed to catch the exact bottom here, then that kind of leverage is, um, you, it's orgasmic uh, when you get this kind of move out of a bottom. But if you don't pick the exact bottom, let's say, you know, you, you, you see this first big rally, you're still a little timid, you're waiting for some confirmation, then you get confirmation the next day and now it's overbought. So now you're waiting for a pullback and, and then the, you know, get another rally day and now the fear of missing out takes hold and you, you're afraid to wait for a pullback. So now you just get in. You know, at this point, you're assuming it's going to the moon and uh, you, you get in with 10 or 15 times leverage and then... Um, like I said, you know, the the last short-term buyer buys and, and now you need a little correction. And so you've bought a little bit late, you've used a, a huge amount of leverage, and then now you have to suffer a drawdown. Well, with, with 15 times leverage, let's say, you know, if you're the typical novice type of trader, you've, you've bet your, your entire uh, wad on this leverage. And, and let's just say you've got $100,000 and you put it all into into call options or even, you know, three times leveraged um, ETFs. And now you're, you're having to weather this, this drawdown. And especially during this day, during the day, you get this big move down. Um, if you're at 15 times leverage, then you've, you've probably watched what was a modest gain turn into, you know, a, a 50% loss. So you've watched your hundred thousand dollar portfolio drop to 50, $50,000 in like three or four days. And it's just not possible to survive that kind of pain. Um, if this is, you know, all that you have and it's not something you can easily replace uh, if, if it all goes south, you know, if, if this were to turn out to be uh, a cycle top and it's left translated and you're going to go down and make a lower load, then you're going to lose everything. And so in real time, it looks like you're preparing to lose everything. And so you can't hang on to that massive leverage. You sell, you make, you know, you want to make sure you at least save half of your portfolio. So you, you sell and you've, you've taken a 50% loss. And then of course the bottom, the market bottoms, because now we're in uh, an uptrend. Uh, we're in the advancing phase of an intermediate cycle. So you know, if you could think logically and rationally, you would understand that and you wouldn't panic here at this during this correction. You would have been able to hang on. But because you put on too much leverage with too much of your uh, capital, you, you can't survive that swing and you, you sell for a loss. And then you watch the market um, take off again. And now your emotions are really jumpy um, and twitchy because you've just taken a 50% loss. You, you want to make back your, your losses, but you, um, you don't want to lose the 50% you got left. So now you really want to make sure that, um, that you're correct before you get back in. And, uh, and, and in this case, you get into this real choppy move, which is very, very erratic. And, you know, it, it might be here before you feel good again about, getting in the market. And this is, this is when I saw a lot of people uh, really, you know, I, I got a lot of questions on the um, premium website in the comments that is now a good time to add. Well, realistically, no, this is not a good time to add. We've had a monstrous move up to this point. So if you're thinking logically, uh, this, this is, no, this is not a good time to add. This is a dangerous time to add. But people are, you know, they've, they've either missed most of the move or they've been timid and they haven't gone in very deep and they want to get more exposure. And now they're, they're getting visions of the market just running away to the upside. And so now they want to know if, if they can add and add leverage. 
and I'm I'm trying to coax people, uh, you know, down off the mountain here. This is not the time to be adding leverage. This is actually this is when I was telling people you need to get off leverage. You need to you know go back to just you know like GDX. Um, you know, there's there's uh, plenty of beta in, in GDX alone. The, the thing is volatile. You don't need to make it you know three times volatile with a three times ETF. And then. Um, and then we we get an intermediate decline and and if you jumped in here with with you know 15 times leverage because you were afraid of missing any more of the move and you wanted to get rich quick then you watched your hundred thousand dollar account probably drop to ten thousand you you probably lost at least ninety percent of your account and again you you weren't on the wrong side of the trade. You are you are on the right side of the trade. We are in the advancing phase of a new eight year cycle. So the bull is going to at some point this this move is going to run out of sellers and then we're going to start another leg up. And that that's exactly what happened here. So if if you could hang on, then the the bull will rescue your trade and and you would have made a lot of money. But again, emotionally, in real time, you're not privy to a crystal ball that tells you that hey this is this is the bottom we're gonna we're gonna bounce a little bit retest that bottom and then we're off to the races again you're not privy to that kind of information in real time when we're you know putting in this intermediate cycle bottom so it's this um, desire to get rich quick that causes people to um, first off use too much leverage to use it way too late uh, in, a, in a move when the move is mature and at risk of a, a significant correction and then not being able to control emotions during the correction and, and you know if, if you're going to do that these are all or nothing bets you've got to be able to withstand a 90 percent drawdown on a correction like this and still hang on uh, waiting for the um, the bull trend to rescue your trade and so like if if you're in options generally if you're if you're you know getting something like 15 times leverage it means you're in front month options or maybe two month two months out and then if that's the case you don't have enough time on that position to weather the correction and the move back up so um, the, the first warning is if you're going to take you know large leverage positions you got to buy a lot of time if you're buying those large leverage positions, you know, 10 or 15 weeks into a rally is like, you know, you, you can, you can, you're, you're setting your hair on fire and running through the dynamite factory is what you're doing. Um, sure, you might survive, but you're still an idiot. Um, you, you just, this is not the time to, to put, le the time to put leverage on, if you want to do it, is when you're really scared, not when you're really afraid of missing a move. When you're afraid of missing a move, everybody else is afraid of missing a move, and it means you're, uh, you know, likely to run out of buyers uh, soon and then have to weather a correction. So, uh, I, you know, this is what I try and teach people in the SMT. I, treat, I try to teach them how to be satisfied getting rich slowly, not getting poor quickly. And then, you know, every once in a while, you'll get a move into a bubble. And that, that is a period where you can get rich quickly. But that is a period where you, you have to listen to me about controlling greed. Because if you don't, then you'll get caught at the top of the bubble. And, uh, and then you'll lose all of the riches that you amassed quickly when the, when the bubble implodes. Um, we are not in a bubble phase yet. We've got to break out of these, uh, this, this all-time high at 2090 before the bubble phase starts. And then the, the, the true bubble phase where it just goes up day after day after day, that comes at the very end. So even at the start of the breakout, which is kind of the start of the bubble phase, you're still going to have these these uh, scary corrections uh, that that you know are are going to knock you out of these heavy heavily leveraged positions for massive massive losses uh, unless you can um, take down the position size so that it is uh, you know a position that you can hold on to through a ninety percent drawdown and still hang on 
and wait for the bull trend to rescue uh, your position. Or you've got to be willing to lose it all. Um, you know, you, you've got to be able to, to hang on to a 90% drawdown, still hang on, not sell, and uh, wait for the bull trend to rescue your position like it has done here. Um, and in order to do that, you've got to have enough time on those positions. You know, if you're uh, using uh, call options, you got to buy a lot of time so that you can weather these these corrections. So this is the big mistake that, that many novice and intermediate traders make. They're trying to get rich quick. Most of the time they get poor quick because they can't, you know, their position sizes are too big. Their leverage is, is uh, too much. And they're not able to um, hang on to their position during, uh, you know, just even normal corrections, minor corrections like this, or major intermediate degree corrections like this. Uh, if you're trying to get rich slowly, then then you uh, are not leveraged. Uh, you have a realistic expectation of what's, uh, you know, go going to unfold. You understand that there are going to be these intermediate corrections and your uh, position and leverage or lack thereof will allow you to hang on through these uh, these normal corrections and make it to the stage where the uh, the bubble really takes off in earnest and where you you can uh, use leverage and and get rich quick you, know, you just you know have to at some point you have to control greed so that you don't lose it all when the bubble pops so uh, that, that's what I do in the SMT. I try and teach people to get rich slowly. I try and talk them down off the ledge so that they don't get poor quickly. And, um, you know, a lot of people listen to me and then they go on to learn how to make sustainable gains in the market. Uh, the people that won't listen to me that are, uh, um, you know, focused only on trying to get rich quick, then you know they they get caught in these corrections with too much leverage they they lose too much money and then you know they go searching somewhere else for someone else to to show them how they can get rich quick and and again it's just the, there's very few periods in the market where you can get rich quickly but there are lots of periods in the market where you can get rich slowly all right, so uh, I've got I've still got a couple positions left. If anybody else wants to get um, on board the SMT, send me an email. I'll uh, put my email address in the uh, link below. And uh, if you know if you want to stop losing all of your money trying to get rich quick, and um, have a realistic goal of what's possible in this business, and try and develop a formula that will allow you to get rich slowly and consistently over time. Uh, then shoot me an email and, uh, and you know, we'll, we'll get you uh, on board the SMT newsletter and, uh, you know, you can start learning how to uh, trade with realistic expectations for, you know, market environments um, and, and especially the market environment that we're in right now, especially in the metals.